Welcome back to Headlight Headlines, your daily automotive news podcast. My name is Clayton, your host, and I'm super excited to get into the news today. We actually have a bunch of stuff to go over, so this may be a little bit of a longer episode. Um, But before we get things started today, make sure to follow us on Twitter at HLightHLines. We tweet out every time that a new episode goes live. Also, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Headlight Headlines. You can always find the video version of this podcast on YouTube. You can see myself, and you can see what exactly we are talking about. And sometimes when we're looking at pictures, like today... With this brand new Nissan Z GT4, you can see exactly what it is that we are talking about. But we're going to go ahead and get started with this article here. Last night, Nissan revealed the Z GT4. We saw this yesterday in a teaser that they posted. Um, it's exactly what we expected, basically. The track weapon version of the Nissan Z that just came out. This thing is pretty cool looking, I cannot lie. Um, They said they're going to talk more about it at SEMA here soon. Um, And all they really did was show off the images that came out with this vehicle. They didn't say really a ton about it. Obviously, it's a lot of legacy, tradition, stuff like that. Um, But they're saying that we'll get tons more details at SEMA in November. Obviously, it has a lot of aero components on it. It's got this front splitter canards. It's got uh, hood vents on it, hood pins on it. It's got a wing on the back. Uh, It looks like it has a different exhaust. It looks like it has just a single exit exhaust where it has the cutout for a dual exit exhaust. As you can see right there... um, has a roll cage in the in the back. Sorry, um, and this is basically going to be the race car version of the Nissan Z. They're saying it will compete in the Fuji 24 Hour Race. Um, well, it competed in that back in June um, at their engineering facilities, and. It's for only severe competition use. So this is not a road car. This is a uh, track car, a competition car. And they're trying to make it very competitive. Um, Obviously, it should have some engine upgrades. Stock engine has 400 horsepower, 350 pound-feet of torque out of the twin-turbo V6. Um, So we can expect a little bit more power being pulled out of that for this version. Um, I'm excited for SEMA to see what else they reveal about it. I want to see what it actually looks like in person. Obviously, this is just uh, images and stuff like that. But I think it looks pretty cool. I like the paint job on it. Um, not really a big fan of the GT4 on the side, but besides that, I'm a pretty big fan of it. Uh, Nismo on the back, GT4 badge. But yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, looks nice. I'm a big fan of the Z. Um... And hopefully this should help them with some of the bad press they're getting about the automatic transmissions right now. They're saying it will deliver to customers the first half of next year. Um, So that means it should be going into production here very soon. Next up, we've got a brand new car from Nissan, the 2023 Nissan Aria. Um, This is a, well, it's not brand new, but pricing for the 2023 version of it so this is an electric suv from nissan the aria i think it looks a lot like the murano um especially in the front end design it's pretty nice looking vehicle Uh, i don't know about this like rose gold orange bronze color um they're saying this crossover is coming out this fall Um, And they finally have pricing. So there's a few trims on this. There is the Engage model, which is the base model. Um, And then there is the Engage Plus, um, which has all-wheel drive, or as they're calling it, E4 Force. E Force, but the F is a 4. Not really sure about that. 
So that engaged model is the entry level is front wheel drive $44,485 and then the top of the line is the Platinum Plus um, with the E-Force and that is $61,000 so pretty expensive for that top of the line trim obviously EV brand new coming out from Nissan um, so here there are a ton of trim levels for this Engage Venture Plus, Evolve Plus, Empower Plus, Premier, Engage E-Force, Engage Plus E-Force, Evolve Plus E-Force, and Platinum Plus E-Force. So, range from 43 to 60,000 before shipping destination. Um, they're saying that it comes standard with the Safety Shield 360, which includes blind spot warning, lane departure warning, front and rear automatic braking, rear cross traffic alert um, and blind spot and lane intervention um, it has a colored heads up display you can see pictures of the infotainment screen right here kinda small but it has a very simplistic look here in the interior very interesting design here with the shifter I don't think I've ever seen this before where how the center console is completely separate from the dash but it has a shifter like this mounted in the center console typically if they have this it's still connected to the dash in some sort so I really like this design of the interior I think it's very cool um, very simplistic also it looks like there might be some buttons up here on this dash trim piece I can't really tell um, got some more buttons over here very nice interior Nissan is killing it right now with their vehicles um, and this does not qualify for the tax credit um, but yeah they're saying the front wheel drive models will come out this fall all wheel drive will come out in early part of next year and they're saying that it gets between 216 and 304 miles in range which is a pretty decent figure um, I think so very cool from Nissan I'm very excited to see this car when it comes out um, it should be I think it should sell pretty well in the EV SUV market next up our next two we've got just a like some quick updates for some 2023 models we have starting off infinity uh, QX 50 price jump everybody's having a price jump right now from their old models just because of inflation and stuff like that um, so the QX50 is going up 1300 bucks and they added a new mid-level trim um, they're saying to make up for this price increase they're adding a frameless rear view mirror heated exterior mirrors and a wireless charging pad all standard um, and then the sport trim comes in at just under 50,000 starting price 41,000 so it is a little bit more expensive for that sport trim um, but let's see what else they have for that the top of the line trim is called the uh, autograph I believe yep autograph trim um, so yeah doesn't really say what oh here we go sport trim um, between the lux and sensory it includes a unique front fascia and glass block gloss black exterior trim 20 inch wheels um, so nothing too crazy honestly not a big fan of this interior pictured here that last Nissan one was so good and this one is like what is going on there's two screens this looks like my <laughs> CarPlay unit that I put in my truck that I bought um, and then there's like a completely different thing down here and this I don't know what's going on. Looks like way too much. Shifter is weird. Drive mode select. Electronic parking brake. It looks like it's trying to be sporty, but it's like it's a SUV. So why does it look like that on the interior? The exterior looks so good for the interior to look like that. I don't know. Not for me. So yeah, if you're wanting a new QX50, check out the new trim, and it will be a little pricier. And then the other one we got here, the Kio. Kia Nero, I cannot speak today. Um, starting just under twenty eight hundred bucks, um, it's gone up eighteen hundred dollars from previous year. Uh, 
and they're saying they have it has grown a little bit um and there's a little bit more cabin space um and they're calling this the second generation um front wheel drive will be available very soon and they uh reduced their trim levels they only have three they've got the lx ex and sx um and they start oh the sx starts at thirty three thousand. so a actually a very short range for the pricing on this kia um i think it looks really cool it looks like a it looks like if they did the kia soul made it a bit curvier and cooler to be honest um i like it 2.5 inches longer um, so there's more cargo room and more leg room and they made standard driver assist features it has 139 horsepower um, 1.6 liter inline four and it is a hybrid so it has a 32 kilowatt motor and they're saying 53 miles per gallon very nice figure um, they said they got 46 on their tests with the last year's model so still pretty good um, I think it's a really cool car, kind of too small for something I would ever consider getting, um, but pretty nice looking vehicle if you are looking in this market, and it's relatively cheap. Next up, we have a pretty cool um, update from Bentley. The new Bentayga has two new um, versions, two new trims. There's the Bentayga S and the Bentayga Azure. Um, Obviously, this is a luxury hybrid SUV. Um, they are saying that the new model has more power and electric range. They're trying to get 27 miles out of electric only. Um, they're saying it still has the same 3 liter twin turbo V6, um, which makes 134 horsepower, um, which is a little bit of an increase. Peak output, 455 horsepower which is up uh, 12 from last year, and 5.20 to 62 time. Top speed, 158, that's the same. Um, they're saying they did some enhancements in the engine bay. The Hybrid S is effectively a greener version of the last V8 version. Um, obviously, it looks exactly the same, most of this. The Azure is increasing the serenity it's making it more fashionable you can see this is the s it looks more sporty the azure looks more elegant and classy i would rather have the azure by far the s is a little too much for me um it's on the same wheelbase and they're saying they don't know if it'll go on the extended wheelbase version um but it should be coming out here soon I don't know if they have a release date yet. Yeah, like I said, only for the standard wheelbase. Um, but pretty cool new trims. Obviously one trying to be a little bit more sporty in this S trim, the yellow one. And the um, Azure being a little more luxury. It's cool that they offer hybrid for this vehicle. Um, as its competitors don't, I don't think. I don't think the Urus does. I could be completely wrong on that. Let me know. Um, but yeah, cool stuff from Bentley. I really like that Azure, the S. I don't know if it's the yellow color, but not for me. Next up, we have the 2023 updated uh, BMW Z4. Um, obviously, if you are unaware, this is the sibling to the new Toyota Supra. Um, the Supra is built on this platform, or well, it uses the engine from this vehicle. Um, I love the Z4. I think it's one of the most underrated cars that are out right now. Um, obviously, most people will get the M3 or M4 before they get this. I think the Z4 is really nice. Um, they're saying it is starts at $53,795, which is quite expensive. But I think in a few years, this will be a pretty good deal of a car, considering it has... That same, uh, I believe it's a Turbo V6 from, well, that the Super has. So they're saying that they have a 194 horsepower, the 2-liter 4-cylinder with a 6-speed manual. Um, but 
the straight six um, does not come with the manual. It only comes with the automatic, which is kind of interesting considering the Supra is only going to be available with that six uh, six cylinder engine with the manual. Kind of odd. Not sure why they're doing this decision. They should bring the manual because they have it in the other car. Um, I love this car. I really do. Obviously, I like the Supra just a little bit more, but I feel like for how much the everyone hates on how the M4 and M3 have changed to look different, I think this Z4 kind of keeps the older BMW styling while also having all of the new goodies in it. Um, it's also convertible, which some people like, some people hate. I feel like on a car like this, I like it. Um because that's just how it is, so yeah, I'm a fan of the Z4, if it wasn't so darn expensive, it would be a pretty good pickup right now, uh, wait a few years, we'll see what it's sitting at, and then our last story for the day, we have the 2023 BMW XM, and it is the first um, M plug-in hybrid vehicle, and it is advertising 644 horsepower um, performance SUV obviously BMW has electric SUVs the iX but this is a electrified 4.4 liter twin turbo v8 plug-in hybrid um, XM so this is going to be a very expensive vehicle. They're saying nearly $160,000. Oop, did not mean to click on that. Um, <laughs> they are making a crazy performance vehicle here. Crazy performance SUV. Obviously, it seems to me like they're making this to compete with like the Bentley Bentayga we were talking about before, the Urus. Um, I believe Ferrari's coming out with something like that. I think we talked about that. Um, so yeah, this thing is a beast. The looks are very geometric up front, which is okay, like it's not terrible, but it also I feel like kind of keeps that BMW SUV styling um, that they've had for a while. So yeah, they're saying it's a five seat, so I'm assuming that's just a two row SUV, and they're saying it'll spit out 644 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque, um, and it has a... 25.7 kilowatt hour battery um, out of a 194 horsepower electric motor um, and it can go up to 30 minutes on electric power alone which is already more than what Bentley was trying to get on their electric only range um, just by a little bit um, they're also having 50-50 weight distribution um, M Sport differential a lot of M goodies coming on this vehicle um, but yeah, it's got some big wheels. That is what I noticed in the pictures up first. They're saying 23-inch wheels. <laughs> That's insane. Um, has the new look, obviously, with the front fascia. The color is pretty nice. And they're saying that the starting price is right under 160 And the MX label red, which is the top-of-the-line trim, is $186,000, basically. Um... They'll make these in the Spartanburg plant in South Carolina. Um, but yeah, I think it's really cool. And they're saying it's scheduled to start in 2022. So it should be very soon here. I'm here in the next couple of months. Um, very cool from BMW. But that is going to wrap it up for today's video. We had a lot today. Um, so it has been a bit of a longer episode. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are on the show on Twitter at HLightHLines. You can also follow us on there and get notifications every time that a new video goes live. You can do the same on YouTube. Um, subscribe at Headlight Headlines and check us out on our other socials. But with that, um, I hope you all have a great day today. Stay safe out there, um, and I'll see you all in the next episode.